G'day, I'm Stan, and this is Liv, and we're here to make sure you get your job done right. That's right, and for this session, we're lucky enough to have Jay from Resine. Kia ora, Jay. To help us with all things paint and stain. So what's our first question you got there, Liv? First question is from Amanda, and she says, it's a two-part question, actually. We would love to know the best way to tackle a very bright red room. The room has four red walls, and we want to paint the colour half tea. Okay. It's, it's like a, a beige, neutral tone kind of colour, right? Yeah. Yep. It's their first time painting, so any tips are appreciated. And also, they'd like to know the best way to patch holes from previous people hanging things on the wall. Okay. You've got such a bright colour going into an off-white. Yes. You really need an undercoat. And this time, it's so bright red, off-white, you should do two coats of the undercoat. So why am I doing two coats of undercoat instead of like just one coat of that and two top coats? Essentially, if you do one coat of that, chances are you're going to do three top coats. So either way, we're going to either be... Either way is four, four coats. And so, but you're going to get better coverage with an undercoat, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. And this quick dry primer is the best one to do it? Definitely. So yeah. it's primer undercoat, it's water-based, it'll dry in 20, 30 minutes, so you're good to go. Okay, so that's good for our walls, but what about all our timber work, our skirting, architraves, that may also be painted? So you can use that on there as well. Okay. Yeah. So what about our um, prep on that? So well, obviously we've got the holes to fill. Yep. So we want a filler that's obviously sandable on all the holes that's in the wall. Obviously, yeah, if it's a big hole, you know, watch a video on how to patch a hole in the wall, I'd say. Yeah. But um, smaller stuff. Um, what I see a lot with painters is uh, they will put a primer coat on everything, all their woodwork, and it shows up all the holes. Oh, oh, is this a good practice or should we fill our holes first? So I'd definitely recommend priming before filling. Uh, depending on the holes, you need to sand back, scrape back any loose flake in the paint. Yeah. Make sure there's no sharp edges, then you can spot prime with the primer, yep. fill it, sand it, and then prime again. So after we've put our, top, our undercoat on, is it good practice or should we be sanding that, give that a light sand before our top coat? It's always recommended just to give it a light sand, just to help uh, key the surface, just so the top coat has something better to stick to. Generally when you put your hand across it, you can actually feel it's a little bit, it's not smooth, it's a little bit raspy, isn't it? So yeah. you should be knocking that back. Yeah. With a pole sander, something what, 180, yeah. 200? Or uh, yeah, around 200 pole sander, definitely. So it just means you can reach all the high bits, you're not up and down the ladder. So 200 grit good. sandpaper, nice. Yep. So prep is key. And yeah. in fact, yeah. I would say prep is king. Yeah. So Stan, what would be your top tips for prep? Uh, well, Jay, I mean, I think you would concur with me on this. I mean, prep is the most boringest part of the job, but it pretty much is the most essential. Definitely. Mm. So um, sand, clean, or cleaning first, make sure we clean the surface well. Yeah, just remove any contaminants that are on the surface before you get started. Yep. And so like if we're in an area, maybe it was like a laundry where there's a fair bit of moisture, if we yep. have like a bit of, there was condensation on the wall, it may be a little bit mildewy. Yep. We could use something like a sugar soap. You can use sugar soap, just make sure you clean down with plenty of fresh water afterwards, just so there's no residue of the sugar soap yep. left on the wall. Before we start painting, obviously, we want to put our drop cloths down. What I actually do is get a really good quality um, tarpaulin and I actually take that to the floor so it can't slide around on you, especially yep. if you've got a ladder there. You know, it's quite dangerous having a ladder on a slippery surface. Yep. So basically, we're talking about just cleaning, sanding, priming. Um, this is going to be 90% of the job, really, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But if you do the prep right, then the painting will look good. Yeah, great. Yeah. And should we be taking into consideration the weather? Definitely start when thinking about paint. the conditions when yes. you're painting. Essentially, we always say at Resine, if the clothes won't dry on the washing line, then the paint's not going to dry. So most of the paints will be down to about 10 degrees. Okay. If the temperature's going to drop below 10 degrees, you really don't want to be painting. Your paint's not going to adhere no. properly, is it? However, there are winter grade paints that do work outside. Okay. And in Stan, as you know, there's always the Easy As videos to look at, right? Well, I was just about to get into that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, there's a couple of videos. <laughs> Um, how to paint indoors, how to paint exterior, and also got a video on how to remove wallpaper prior to painting. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to go into the next question now. Okay. This one is from Linka. We have wooden joinery, cedar frames and Rimu trim, so two different types of timber. It looks like the cedar is either bleeding or previous owners have tried to stain over the polyurethane. Any tips on how to handle the situation would be amazing. Okay, so it sounds like there's a little bit going on there, and without knowing whether it's a stain, a varnish, or a polyurethane, 
it's probably best to actually strip it back down and sand back to a bare timber. Regardless of what they're going to put over Regardless top. Regardless of yeah. what they're going to do. Okay. And then from there, because you've got two different types of timber, you're going to need two different types of primer. So cedar is a different type of the, the makeup of It's very tannin rich. Lots of tannins and our native timbers have lots of oils in it. Yeah. yeah. So the water-based quick dry is really good for the sort of native timbers, like the Rimu, the Matai, Totra, and then you're going to need a solvent born primer for the cedar. Like an um, like a oil-based? The, the oil-based yeah. primer. Okay, yeah. great. Brilliant. Okay, so I have a question then. How do you get rid of old paint? So Rosine run a paint wise program where you can bring all your old paint back into the shops. Uh, we recycle the paint and we recycle the cans. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. And you take other paint brands as well, don't so you? So we do take other paint brands as well, but there's costs associated with those. Okay. We've got a question now from Annette, and she has asked, what sort of paint can I use on our decks? They're already painted, and when it is wet, or when they are wet, the decks are lethal. They're so slippery. I need to cover them with something that I feel safe walking on. I have a balance issue. Okay, so the first thing, I'd say clean down with a good uh, mould cleaner, like the moss mould cleaner from Rizzi. So the slippiness could just be mildew and moss right. on the surface. It sounds where it is slippy, it could well be a gloss paint that's on mm -hmm. there at the moment. So you're going to need to degloss that and sand back. So when you say degloss, we're going we're gonna to sand that back. Um, what was something like, like so a, a 120 or something yeah, like that? Yeah, depending on the type of paint that's on there. If it's yeah. an old solvent born paint, they do get really hard. Yeah. So to degloss it, you're looking more like a 60 or 80 grit. Yeah. Um, if it's just a normal semi-gloss water base, then it's just going to be something a little bit a more like sand. A, yeah. Okay. And then are we going with a primer? So after that, yep, use the water base quick, quick dry primer. Yep. Spot prime any barriers back to timber. Be good to do a good coat over everything. Yep and then use something like the walk-on paving and timber paint. So our walk-on paving paint, um, obviously this is specialised for this particular type of use yep. because it's got a fine grit in it. Yeah, can so we use it on concrete as well? Tip, so you can use it on concrete, you can use it on timber. Okay, great. And so slip resistant effectively, yeah. yeah. So just non-skid. Non Exactly. And you, you need to tint that, don't you? Or you can You can have it. it white or you can tint it into a range of colours. Right, so it's not clear. No. So she's no. not going to put it over her current deck, which is already painted. No. So what about painting that deck, you know? Like I see a lot of people rolling a deck using a, you know, um, a fine nap and just rolling the paint, uh, yeah. the paint or the stain on. Can we do that? So if you're going to do a stain, you're better off using a brush, just yeah. so the stain really works into the timber. Uh, with the second coat, you can roll it, but you're probably better off once you've got the A paintbrush just gives a better finish, and, and you're getting so, yeah. more paint on, aren't you? And you're yeah. also getting in the cracks. Yeah. Yeah. This is from M. Uh, oh, this is a very good question. I've got exposed putty on the exterior of my windows. Do I need to paint this to seal them, and how? Okay, yeah, so to seal it, you definitely need to prime and paint it. Okay. But depending on the putty that they've used, depends on the primer that you use to prime it. Because a lot of the old patties uh, and for glazing was, was a linseed based, yep. linseed oil based, so you had to put an oil based primer on it. Yeah, so uh, the linseed putties are generally around two weeks to six weeks. Before so you've got to you wait could... two weeks and then paint before right. six weeks before you can prime. There's water based putties around now that can be uh, primed within 48 hours, some are as short as two hours. And also just saying on that as well, I mean, maybe a bit late in this case, but before putty goes in the window is actually a really good tip. Well, it's, it's quite essential too, to prime the window Definitely frames before yeah. the, the glazing goes in and the yeah. putty goes on, yeah. Definitely. And then when it comes to actually priming the putty, once you've worked out what's there, Carry that primer about two mil onto the glass just to create a good seal mm. and then paint over the top. Mm. Okay, so what I see a lot nowadays is glaziers actually leave a sticker on the glass. Well, they generally most of and tell you what sort of putty yeah, it is. Yeah, generally they'll leave a sticker up just letting you know what the best primer is mm. and how long you can cool. wait to paint. Great. Okay. All right, so we have a question here from Lucas and he has a dining table. <laughs> he believes that it might be oak. It is, has an oil or a varnish coat on it that he wants to revamp so it ties in with the rest of his furniture. What is the best process to follow if we would like to paint the legs white and have the top of the table part itself 
matte, you know, just like sand with a natural. I actually really like this question because, you know, like to go and buy a dining room table nowadays can be damn expensive. Mm. And yeah. we're talking about products that probably aren't going to last as good as something like a nice old oak table. It's true. So, I mean, what, what what's your suggestions here, Joe? So, for me, I'd definitely recommend sanding it to get it back to a natural state. Uh, it's going to be a bit more elbow grease than using a stripper, but I think it's much much more worth the effort doing it. So, I mean, yeah. those oak dining, dining room tables generally were like a varnish, weren't they, or a polyurethane? Uh, be some sort of polyurethane or shellac yeah. on it, I would have thought. So, yeah. a fine sandpaper? Uh, to start off with, you might need something yeah. a bit more grunty and then okay. come down to a finer sandpaper. So, it's probably it's always good to try and sand it back in an area where maybe it's not so seen and start see how Start somewhere sort of a bit more inconspicuous and then just see how you go. Okay, so we've got two different surfaces. They want to paint the legs white and they want to paint the top maybe just back. Clear coat out or clear stain coat. Or so. Yeah. Prep the same. So once you've sanded everything back and it's bare timber, if you're going to paint the legs, you'll need to prime them first. Again, you can use the water-based primer. A good old free water-based primer. Mm. Yep. And then because it's the legs sort of banging into the legs with kids and vacuum cleaners and stuff, yep. uh, go with a water-based enamel. Okay. So you definitely recommend sanding over using a paint stripper. I would do, yeah. The, some of the paint strippers can end up staining the timbers. Yeah. Okay, all right. <clears throat> we have the last question, two last questions are for me. Two most commonly asked questions around paint colours and stain, or the two most common misconceptions? Oh yes, what would that be? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So I think a very big misconception is that New Zealanders paint everything in white. We're, I resemble that remark. We love <laughs> DIY and often we're buying houses to sell and so we stay safe and we paint it white. But I would love to encourage everyone to use a colour on your walls. It does not need to be a primary colour. It can be a very soft hue, but it will be amazing how <laughs> it will just transform that whole space. You're talking about a feature wall? I'm not talking about a feature wall. Misconception number two, that feature walls enhance the space. Um, I think that feature walls can make a space feel a lot smaller. It can skew sort of the feeling and the, the size of a room. And I would say um, do a feature room instead of a feature wall. And again, it doesn't need to be a hugely bold colour, but I have just seen an amazing navy blue bedroom and it's incredible. Okay, so I think that's the first time a builder and interior designer have come to Actually agree able to that. agree on something. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, all it took was paint. Yeah. Okay, well, that was our last question. So, Jay, thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you. I feel like we've covered some really good ground. Yep, so if you do have any more questions, don't hesitate to get online or go in store just to make sure you get the job done right.